Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. This guy asked me if I wanted a whole bunch of candy. Only thing is, that it is all behind the Dollar Tree. Naturally I said, sure, and he led me out back behind the store. What is the creepiest situation you have been in with strangers? An older woman came up to me and my girlfriend at a motel, she told us she couldn't get into her room, I asked if her keycard didn't work and she told us no, it did but she wasn't strong enough to open the door. We walked over with her and saw that she was trying to get into a storage closet. I told her this wasn't her room, and she got angry and told her she had just put her stuff inside the room. I showed her that it said storage closet and that her key card didn't work because there was nowhere to put the key. She refused to believe me and went to the front desk. When she walked away, a kid came out of the closet and told us that the woman had been following her because she thought she was her granddaughter, but they weren't related at all. She told us the woman tried to push her into her car, but she had ran away and hid in the storage closet. I asked her if she wanted me to call the police and she said no and ran off. The older woman came back with a staff member and he opened the door to the storage room after she said she had left something inside of it. She looked really confused when it was empty and stormed off. We told the employee what had occurred and he said he'd report it to the police. We left the motel after that. This happened a few weeks ago. I had just received some bad news while I was walking home after hanging out with some friends. I was walking down the street crying when I noticed a guy sitting in a park truck staring at me. I was too busy with my own thoughts. I just kept on walking, with music in my ears. Soon I felt someone grab my shoulder and turned me around. It was the guy from the truck. He had seen me crying and stopped to ask me if I was okay. I took out my earplugs and tried to tell him I was fine, and I just wanted to go home. He hugged me and I couldn't help myself from bursting into tears. It felt like such a random act of kindness. Then suddenly his grip got tighter and I felt uncomfortable, but he wouldn't let me go. I looked up at him, because he was way taller than me and begged him to just leave me alone. He then tried to kiss me and pull me towards his truck, saying how pretty I was, and asking for my number. I just panicked and tried kicking him but he was way bigger than me. I screamed for help and luckily two men were close enough to hear me, and ran over to get the guy to let me go. I've never ran that fast home. And the worst part is that it was in broad daylight and he was just abusing the fact I was in such fragile state. Was in downtown St. Louis, on my way to a blues game and a little lost. A homeless guy approached my buddy and I, and asked us for some money. We gave him some cash and asked him if he knew which way to the, then, Scott Trade Center where the game was. He said sure, follow me. Cue the guy leading us through some super sketchy looking back alleys. My buddy and I start shooting each other glances like oh crap we're about to get murdered aren't we? Came out of the alley, and sure enough he had led us right to the Scott Trade Center with a great shortcut. Super nice dude. Hitchhiking at 4 o'clock. Guy picks me up, his eyes are all pupils. Drive in silence for a minute after I thank him and introduce myself. He asks if I have a weapon. I say no. He violently pulls a blue big pen from his side door and thrusts it at me, while making intense eye contact, here. Take this. If anyone tries to hurt you, stab them with it and bail. I take it. Thank him. He then tells me this is as far as he's going and I thank him for the ride and hop out. It's a straight stretch of highway, I think he realized he armed his passenger and was afraid I'd stab him. I live in South Korea, and as an obvious foreigner, some Korean people think it's highly appropriate to stop me in the street and talk to me. No, I don't mean friendly conversation. I mean they are on a moped. On the sidewalk. I'm walking. They drive the moped in front of me to block my path. Ask me if I'm Russian, which is code for prostitute. Then when I try to walk away. They rev their moped so it keeps blocking my path. While I try to sidestep the moped, they are close to running me over. If I get away, they chase me on their vehicle. It's really creepy because most of the guys are above 50. Stop harassing me because you wanted to practice your English or get female genital. Hire a effing teacher or dial up a prostitute. I once went to the Dollar Tree at night, and this homeless guy came up to me all beat up, blood-stained white shirt, torn jeans and a black eye. He started making conversation with me about the quality of stuff in the frozen section. And somewhere along the line he asked me if I wanted a whole bunch of candy, only thing is that it's all behind the Dollar Tree. Naturally I said, sure, and he led me out back behind the store, and behold there has this entire truckload of leftover Easter candy from the previous holiday, that he helps load in my truck. 
We're Facebook friends now. My then wife and I were traveling from New England to Wisconsin. We thought that we were clever by renting a car for 24 hours, and then making the trip all at once in 21 plus hours straight. The first 6 to 8 hours were a breeze, but the following hours, and hours, and hours of driving puts you in kind of an alternate universe, in which you come to think that you've spent your entire life driving, and will drive for the rest of your life. Anyway, somewhere around Gary, Indiana we had to pull over for gas and stretch our legs. I had pulled off the highway in a small town as there was a big lit sign for a gas station. I walked into the gas station and gave the attendant $20 and headed out to gas up. I'm standing there gassing up and my wife is in the restroom, when a petite elderly woman wearing a black plastic garbage bag as a poncho approached me. I was drunk on sleep deprivation, so I just stared at her for a moment, trying to make sense of what was going on. She asked if I could spare a drop of the gas. I blinked hard while trying to process that. She lifted the bottom of her poncho and she was naked underneath. She again asked for a drop of gas. I was beginning to freak out when my wife returned and gave me a look like, what the hell is going on? I told her that the woman wanted a drop of gas. Then the old woman lowered her poncho and looked angry at my wife. We all stood in silence for a moment. Then the old woman said in the coldest voice I've ever heard, I can kill you whenever I want. My wife snapped and slapped the old lady, and we hung up the gas hose, dove into the car, and peeled out of there. This was probably creepy to the poor guy at the time but it's pretty funny to look back on it. I once flew to Denver with my dog and for obvious reasons, I only gave her minimal food and water before the trip, so my first priority when we landed, was to get her some food and water and take her out to pee. She is very well trained, and perhaps a little picky when it comes to doing her biz in the Denver airport is in a desert. In the absence of the grass she prefers, she simply didn't want to pee. So, in my infinite wisdom, I went up to a parking attendant and asked if he knew where I could find some grass, in Colorado, right after weed was legalized. Which was pointed out to me later. He looked at me funny and was like no I can help you but I was kinda desperate so I said, really? I just need some grass for my dog. He gives me an even funnier look and says no and walks away. I was like WTF and eventually she settled for peeing on a non-grassy surface. It wasn't until I told the story to someone later, that I realized what a dunce I was being in context. So much face palm. I used to do this thing when I had a couple extra bucks. I'd make a sign that said tell me a story and I'll give you a dollar and have that out while I waited for my bus. I lived in an outer suburb and there were only two buses that went where I needed to go, so I usually had about a 40 minute wait. I'd get lots of really cute stories, a girl told me about a new crush, a guy talked about moving in with a girlfriend for the first time. Got some sad ones too. One I remember is a guy breaking down and talking about how he'd been kicked out of his home and was taking the bus to a friend's with just a garbage bag full of his stuff. I also had Riddler awareness guy. This dude with a big red and black face tattoo came up to me, saw the sign, and started talking my ear off about government conspiracies. He kept going around shouting Riddler awareness because it was his month of service to a secret organization he was part of, that kept him safe from government brainwashing. Buses came and went, and this guy just sat on the bench talking to me about how there were bugs planted in the bushes and trees, and he was one of the top 20 people that the government was after. For what, I'm not sure. Finally, it reached a point where we were the only two people at the bus stop and he turned to me and said, you know, I'd really love to have sex with you. Redheads increase the light output and I'd like to partake of that. And I thought great, I'm going to get stabbed or something. I tried my best to be calm and said, I don't want to do that. But thank you for the offer, and started praying that my bus would be early. Riddler awareness guy was totally cool. That's alright, but if you don't mind I'd like to wait with you until your bus comes. It's a rough neighborhood and I'd hate for you to be stuck here alone, but I'll go away if you want. So he sat with me until my bus came, waved goodbye and I never saw him again. Okay, so I've told this story before under a different account. In the early 2000s I was convinced to go on a double date with a friend. She had a thing for a guy she met in a nightclub and we went to his house, where I would also meet this guy's friend, a person I'd never met before, but she thought we'd get along. I was immediately getting bad vibes from this guy, he was a little off, shall we say, but I was in a strange house and in an area of the city I didn't know that well, so I thought I would just ride it out. My friend took herself upstairs with her f-buddy pretty much as soon as we arrived anyway. Creepy guy asked me what kind of films I liked so I mentioned I liked horror films, so he pulls a DVD off the shelf and puts it on. It was a film about Ted Bundy. 
He's sitting next to me on the couch, edging himself closer to me and during one of the more disgusting scenes, where he's just murdered a woman and is now doing unspeakable things to her corpse whilst yelling f u b. Creepy guy does the pretend to yawn whilst putting arms around shoulders thing and says this film is giving me a boner. And I nope the f out of there immediately. Down on my luck, and out of money, I was booking into a rundown hostel in Athens. It turned out it also doubled as a brothel. The crazy looking manager held my passport, while a one eyed prostitute took me to the room, as she opened the door I saw dozens of mice on the bed and many more on the floor. No way I going to sleep there. I said I changed my mind. The prostitute began to pour me and the manager begins shouting at me in Greek, telling me he won't give me my passport till morning. It was creepy and difficult getting out of there. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Subscribe and like the video if you want free candy out of my truck, which is parked in a star alley, separated from the open street. That was a joke, please do not follow people that offer you candy. Especially not if they claim the government is after them.